Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. Today, we're incredibly lucky to be joined by the fantastic Edwin Hodge to talk all about his latest movie, The Tomorrow War. And the first thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that after you did the initial table read that you and Chris McKay, who's the director of the film, started having a lot of conversations and really trying to figure out where you could take this character of Dorian beyond the details that the script give you. Um, and so I just wanted to ask about those conversations and the types of details that the two of you really wanted to flesh out and ultimately what we see in him as the character that came out of that collaboration and those conversations. Um, yeah, well, uh, Dorian, um, Dorian, when we, when we, first uh, read the script, he, he was kind of just this, uh, almost like grifter, you know, kind of this bandit, he, he was out on his own. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it was a cool, cool idea, you know, as, as far as the character was concerned. Uh, when I went back in for the the callback for, for this character, um, that's when McKay was like, I, I know there's more. I, I don't know exactly what it is yet, but like, there's more. What, you know, what, what do you feel? What do you see? And um, I'm not gonna lie, at that time I was really nervous and <laughs> I didn't really have too many suggestions. Um, but um, at the table read, uh, yeah, we, we sat down and we started flushing out, you know, his, his background, you know, where he may have come from. And, you know, I started building this, um, this military story, you know, maybe he was a vet, he served and, you know, this is why he's so highly skilled the way he is, you know, um, it gives him a reason and a purpose to actually want to go fight this, this fight because he believes he can win. Um, but then, you know, we get hit with the, the fact that he has, you know, cancer and that he's dying. And, and, and what kind of journey is that, you know, and, and also thinking about our men and women in service, you know, who, who come back and, you know, have ailments, whether it is PTSD or, you know, um, whatever else may be ailing them. Um, you know, they, they don't get a lot of help and they're, they're left out there to do and survive on their own. And um, so that was another idea that maybe this guy was just on, on his own. You, you know, he had his two his two buddies on the side, but, you know, mentally he was just on his own. And, um, you know, we, we, we created this character, Dorian, who, who ended up having um, this beautiful art in this in, in this film. Yeah, and you were mentioning the, the idea of the PTSD from the fact that he has served before, but that plays into a lot of other elements as well when he's, you know, I mean, he's fighting aliens, but he's seeing people die left and right of him in almost every single scene. And there's kind of a compartmentalization that he's able to do in order to process that for himself, because it's something that he has clearly experienced before. Um, so I was very interested in how you took details like the PTSD and thinking about what he would have seen and experienced and witnessed and how you carried that through to the situation that he's in throughout the film, even though it's a much larger than life situation, there's a very realistic approach to how he's combating everything. Uh, for sure. And, and that was, um, I think, one of the primary objectives of the film is to make sure that every experience um, that the audience did you know, feel was real. You know, um, these characters were real, you know, Dan, you know, he's your everyday father, you, you know, out there trying to, to, to make the best life he can for his, his wife and his, his daughter. Um, and then you also have, you know, Sam Richardson, who's, um, who's lost his wife to, to, to maybe the first war. But, you know, we, we deal with real people in real situations in this kind of catastrophic, chaotic, uh, archaic world. Um, and for for I think the, the greater purpose of the film is to to once again set in, in stone and the idea that you, you know we could be these people you, you know um, if, if this were a real situation you and I may be getting drafted tomorrow you know and and what we would do and how we would deal with it you know everybody's going to deal with this situation different you know some are going to panic some are going to think they can save the world um but we won't know until we're actually thrown into that situation so you know do, dealing with every uh character and kind of the hum, human elements of of these characters is what i think really drove home the the idea of, of this world in this film
And with everything that you just described in the way that it is very much about the human connection, the relationships, who these people are as characters, that also really plays into the way that a lot of scenes are filmed, because even when there is a huge action stunt sequence, the camera then comes in and gives us that intimacy of characters, the relationships, what's the dynamic, you know, how are you and Chris Pratt communicating in those scenes? And so how did that parlay into the way that you were filming and choreographing and working with the camera department on how a lot of the scenes were filmed, making sure that it did always come back to ex everything that you were just describing. Um, it, it, it's a dance, you know, it's a choreography, you know, and, and you know, with this, this crew, this cast, um, you know, everybody did their due diligence to know their moves, <laughs> where they needed to be, how they needed to be, um, understanding the, the tone and, and temperature of the moments. Um, you, you know, it, it was it was great working with our cinematographer, our DP, um, you know, and a lot of the action scenes, um, it, 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 it was a lot weird for me, but, um, you know, he, he, he'd sit down and talk to me. He's like, okay, so you're going to be doing this and, you know, okay, we're, we're going to be coming here with the camera. It's going to be a tight spot here. So we're going to do this with you. We're going to make sure. And it was just like, oh, wow. Like this is an actual, this is an actual performance piece, it, it, you know? And, you know, McKay is, he's, he's behind the camera, making sure everything looks well. Chris Pratt, you know, he's doing his job as, you know, lead actor and producer to make sure everybody's do, doing what they need to do. Um, but it was, a, it was a healthy balance of, I believe, everybody wanting to um, make this project look well, you know, and look great, actually. You, you know, um, I know for myself, my experience with it all from, from rehearsals, you know, with the uh, stuntmen and, you know, our armorers and whatnot um, to, to filming, I can say everybody from from you know primary cast to our extras, you know they 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 put their foot in it. <laughs> and exactly as you said, it does it does look really good, and the effects are really well done. Um, but it sounded like you maybe didn't have that much information about what the aliens were going to look like in the film and how they were going to move at the beginning. Oh um, no, we so did. Oh, you did. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we did. We definitely had some visual effects, uh, some visual aids to help us out yeah. with. Um, you know, understanding what the aliens were going to look like, how they were going to move. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, they sat this down in the uh, the table read and, and showed us videos, basically. So we basically knew um, the look, image, feel of them. Um, you know, once again, it's it, when you're being put into an environment and they're t telling you, you know, the alien is going to be here climbing on the wall and this alien is going to be running. He's going to jump on this car and he's going to smash. Um, we, we actually had an idea of what we were fighting and how we were fighting them. Um, so that, that, that was a cool thing. They, they definitely prepared us uh, for what we needed to get into when we, we started filming. It also sounds like they very much kind of went with a lot of things that would happen in the moment as well. Because I believe, isn't there a moment where your character kind of hits the ground and kills an alien, but that wasn't necessarily part of the original choreography yeah. and stunt work and, yeah, yeah, and with exactly. that, I, I was just I was very curious about the overall kind of dynamic on set and that exploration of discovery but also taking things like that and adding it into the story and really looking for those opportunities um you, you know that's that's the eye of the director I I have the editors you, you know sometimes um you know accidents happen on set you know mistakes do happen we're gonna trip we're gonna fall um you know there is a the scene in a stairwell um where uh, Chris Pratt actually, he, he falls back into the wall and he like broke it, um, but it, it was purely accident and they used it, you know, they kept filming and they were like, you know, let's just go, go, go. Um, my, my, my mistake or accident was uh, when we were running away from them on the street and I kind of stumble and as I'm stumbling, my, my gun goes off and then I kind of get back and I run and they they used it as an alien coming in with my stumble and so it's just you know it's it's the creative eye you know um and i think that's the cool process about about filming you, you know um a lot of things are imperfect you, you know we aren't we're not going to always you know hit our mark the same way we're not going to always you know say our lines the same way but you know, there are going to be little gems and nuggets within these performances that, you know, the editors will be able to use and cut around and, and make everything look good. So, you know, as long as the, the, the artists and the crew, they're out there giving, you know, everything they got to, to, to making the film in that moment, great. Um, we can then toss it over to, once again, like I said, the editors and the colorists and, you know, sound to, to make everything else look better.
You mentioned the stairwell sequence there and in watching the film, that seems like that must have been an incredibly intricate scene to have to choreograph, block, put together and, and actually film and, and probably took a lot of time. So I wanted to ask about what were some of the unique specifics of that particular scene and sequence, because it also feeds into so many other scenes that sounds like it took weeks to film just, you know, that scene of sequences threaded together as well. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that stairwell scene. Um... Man, I, I think we shot that scene over a duration of a of a month and a half almost, it felt like. Um, you know, just different different parts of it, whatnot. Um, you, you know, there were some days we were just specifically, you know, filming us running down the stairs, shoot, you know, shooting up while the camera was coming down. And, and you know, and then, you know, another day we're doing like the hallway scenes and what so forth. Um, you know, it, it was tasking, it was tiring, uh, to be honest with you, you know, walking up and down those stairs. Uh, not really ventilated, you know, we got the, the gunfire smoke, it's hot. Um, you know, it, it was definitely a tough scene, like like the multitude of scenes that we, we had to do, you know, the, the the chase scene in the very beginning, that that took us about three or four weeks, it, it felt like too, you know, working weekends and, you know, long hours and what so forth. Um, but, it, you know, once again, it, it, it we kept everything safe, you know, in tight spaces like that, we have to be very aware of where our muzzles are pointed on our guns, you know, flash, flash injuries are, are, are very prominent and can happen uh, at any moment's time. And so we did our best to make sure that we, we stayed focused in those, those tight spaces and those tight moments. Um, other than that, you know, it's just it was listening to our, our stuntmen, you know, listening to the guys who, who kept us safe and, and wanted to, to make sure that everybody went home um, without any injuries, pretty much. Yeah, and there's so many physical elements, not just to that scene, but so many moments in the film. And and as a performer, it's not just about the training that you do beforehand, but it's also listening to your body as you're filming scenes and figuring out, you know, how you need to continue recalibrating your muscles or the way that you're moving in scenes. So what ended up being some of the specific things that you really had to attune your body to, but even as you were filming and continuing the process? Uh, yeah. Uh... I realized that uh, cardio was a very important thing <laughs> when working on this show, uh, this movie, uh, a lot of running um, and, and a lot of stretching. I mean, there was a lot of uh, pulled hamstrings. Um, I, I know Sam and I on the same day, we, we, we both pulled our hamstrings. He did it uh, more midday of filming and I did it at the end of the day. But, um, you know, it, it did teach us to, to listen to our bodies, you know, to to stretch um you know in moments where we were kind of just sitting still um jared shaw and uh chris pratt and i we would uh do our push-ups you know in the middle of takes um you know work with some dumbbells what so forth just so that we made sure that our body was just ready you know um and, and this was a film that you, you had to be ready you know we were doing 80 yard sprints while running and shooting guns and jumping over things and you know we were doing this three, four, five, six takes back to back, you know, not only that, you know, we're trying to get it from four or five different angles. So we're shooting the same scene all day. And, you know, who, who's to say, you know, how much energy anybody has or who's, you know, muscles are stressed at that given point. Um, but we, we personally had to do the work to make sure that we, we stayed fit and ready to, uh, to work. Yeah, and you were mentioning Sam Richardson, and I feel like it's especially your two characters bring a lot of the really great comedic moments throughout the film. And, and when you're watching a movie like this, it's great for the audience because it allows that slight release of tension in your body as you're engaging in the film. Was it something where there, were, there was a consciousness around finding those comedic beats and figuring out where they should play into a scene? Or did it come very naturally because of the writing and the scripts and the places where it was already existing? Uh, I, I, honestly, I think it came pretty, pretty natural. Um, Sam, just in his personal life, is a very funny man. Uh, he is just, he, he's a nut. Love him to death, uh, but <laughs> absolute nut. And, um, you know, I, I, I think, I, I think a lot of the process, um, especially between he and I, uh, was just riffing off of one another. You, you know, M McKay, you know, at certain points, you know, gave us a little, a, a little uh, space to kind of just improvise, you, you know, and build the moments, you know, once again, there were certain moments that we didn't know exactly what we were looking for. We were trying to build and play and discover. And, you know, once again, that was a fun part of it. So working with Sam, you know, that's, that's what it was. It was just, you know, playing and discovering new, new ways to, to react to, 
you know, the different ways he was delivering his line every, every take, like it was, it was hard to keep up with Sam, you know? Um, but it, it, it was fun. And, and once again, yes, it, it added that, that levity to, to, to the, um, to the movie, you know, we were able to, um, make people laugh, you know, amongst, uh, you know, maybe the tears or the, the sorrows and, you know, uh, whatnot that were going on in the film. Um, especially with my character, you know, he's not a funny guy, but he had, you know, some funny, like kind of one-liners, you, you know, and just some, some funny moments. Um, but once again, you know, it's, it's set in, in, in the, the idea of, you know, people that are just human, you know, even through, through sorrow, we can, we can find some, some moment to laugh. Yeah, and it comes across that there's there's almost a little bit of cynicism in his in him as a character, but it comes from a very realistic place because he completely understands what this mission is and what the outcome is is most likely going to be for almost everybody involved, if not everybody. But at the same time, as he forms these relationships and as he forms these friendships, it does chip away at him a little bit, and he does allow himself to lean into his optimism a bit more. And so yeah. I was interested in the journey of of really that discovery of that other side of him and how you wanted to gradually bring it out through the film as it progresses about the character was uh, heavily relying on uh, the rela relationship with Dan and, and Dan's story. Um, you know, who, once again, who's not going to help a man save his daughter? You, you know, um, uh, he is a man with, with compassion. You know, he's a soldier. He fought, he fought for, for his country. He fought for, for people's lives. And, um, you know, there's this humility in, in this, this being, you know, there's, there's, um, this this uh, this nature about him that is is able to resurface because of Dan's journey, it, you know, and and he then becomes like once again, like you said, a little bit more optimistic about the outcome of, you know, um, what this war could be. You know, he I think he realizes that he's really kind of not on in on his own in this world. You know, once once Dan and, and everybody's like is figuring out with the volcanoes and the claw and the serum, he's like, oh there may be some hope. Okay. You know what? There may not be hope for me because I'm still dying, but at least I can get these people through it. And I think that's where the change happened uh, for Dorian. And with his diagnosis and the fact that he knows that he's terminal, that also feeds so much into his mindset and how he's approaching everything. I mean, there's that repeated mantra of like, I'm going to die my way. You know, I'm going to try and control the one thing that I can control of everything else in the world that's complete chaos. Um, and I was very, I was very interested in kind of where you arrived on a lot of the psychological elements and the mindset of him as a character with that in mind, even in terms of how you thought about when was he diagnosed? How long is, you know, how long has he been battling this? What are some of the treatments that he went through to put him into the emotional headspace that we meet him at in the film? Because obviously we don't see his world before then. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that was, it, it was interesting trying to build that, that, that world for him. Um, you know, for me, I, I always saw Dorian as the guy who kind of refused all of it, you know, refused the treatment, refused, you know, any type of help. Um, you, you know, he was a guy who knew that his, his, his clock was ticking, you know, um, and at the end of the day, once again, he was going to live his life the way he wanted to live it, which was was fighting, you know, and I think, you know, fighting in, in most cases is the best way that that men and women who serve like that's how they know how to live. You know, they sometimes they don't know how to come home and, and just be in their house. You, you know, they, they start missing the brotherhood and the sisterhood and, you know, missing being being out on, on tour you know, employment. So um you know this character was was very much a loner and, and i believe his sickness you know almost became his friend you, you know the, the sickness kind of gave him that that boost of energy to to just fight you know and, and fight relentlessly and, and fearlessly and carelessly you know and i think that's the only reason he survived the first three tours you know because he <laughs> there was almost nothing else to fight for for him you know so um you know once again when there's meaning and there's purpose um all your personal ailments you, you know the things that you know may be keeping you down uh sometimes you just overlook them for the betterment of, of other people yeah and then i also wanted to ask about some of the later sequences in the movie where you were filming in iceland on a glacier especially because that offers such an opportunity to work with more practical elements than than perhaps some of the other scenes earlier on 
Yeah, uh, Iceland was amazing. You, you know, um, definitely working on a glacier. It was an experience that, um, you know, I, I will thoroughly take to my grave. I, I absolutely enjoyed it. Got to see the Aurora Borealis up there. Got to knock that on my bucket list. So, um, but yeah, you, you know, being on, on, on just one of the, the most natural and most beautiful elements of, of the world and being able to kind of film on it, um, you know, was, was exhilarating and, and dangerous at the same time. You know, there, there were fissures and cracks and crevices that, you know, we could definitely fall in and, you know, that, that would have been our lives. So, um, you know, we, we had uh, excavators out there who, who really, you know, knew exactly where to pinpoint you know, the, the, the safe places for us to go and so forth. But, um, you know, I think that's one of the, the coolest things about doing what we get to do. Sometimes we're, we're able to be thrown into these elements and into these worlds that, um, you know, most people don't actually have the privilege of, of experiencing. And, um, you know, being able to, to, to be in Iceland and, and being on that glacier, um, you know, it, it was just, it, it was an all around kind of engrossing, um, growing experience. Yeah. And you, you've worked on a good handful of projects in your career at this point that have, you know, visual effects elements and have a lot of action sequences within them. Um, you know, and contrary to what people sometimes believe, there's really unique aspects to each of them. And it, it's incredibly different processes. So what with Tomorrow War were the really unique aspects of those sides of the movie and, and how everything came together filming and process wise? Uh, I think creatively, um, you know, Build, building the, the, the world in, in, in which we were um, going to uh, fight these aliens is, is something that really kind of was um, truly a, a different experience. Um, you know, as, as an actor and, and you know, I, I did Navy SEAL shows and shows, you know, where we're, we're fighting wars and so forth. You're always shooting at something and something's always shooting back at you, you know. Um, but to really have to dive in, into our head heads and and create this world amongst the world that we were actually um operating in um you know it was it was a new experience and and it was a lot of fun you, you know once again they they put us in the right elements as far as um set design it, you know set design was amazing it, you know the, the cars on fire the red smoke you know they they really did their due diligence to make sure that the world that we were in was authentic for for the movie you, you know and uh in doing so it allows us to really just expand and and just exist and be you know and and hopefully you know that translates on onto to the screen essentially so yeah yeah, and you, you touched upon Six, which was the Navy SEAL show that you did before. Um, and the way that you've always talked about that, it sounds like that was a particularly formative role and project for you, in particular because of the environment and the atmosphere on set. So what is it that you really gained from that project in particular that you always try to carry through into the environment that you're trying to create when you step onto projects? Um, so the whole process of Six, you know, uh, first two seasons from... Um, you know, our, our first uh, session to, to the last um, really made me more of a, a fearless person. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it built this confidence within me. Um, you, you know, I had five other brothers with me on set and, um, you, you know, we were all thrown into this element that was very, very foreign to us, um, you know, and we had to help each other survive it, you know. Um, the discipline that was needed to, to do that show um, as far as, you know, being responsible for our weapons, uh, being responsible for the lives around us while we have our weapons. Um, uh, you know, you know it, I, I was able to bring that onto this, this, this show, you know, when, when we actually were doing the, the rehearsals, uh, a few of the guys thought I was ex-military. They thought I was former military. And I was like, no, I just, you know, I've, I've worked with the best and I, and I try to carry that on to the next project. And, um, you know, that 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 means something. And it, it says a lot about an artist um, who can who can take their prior work and, and move it into to the next. It makes the journey a lot easier. Um, also, it makes the process um, for me a little bit more engrossing. But then I'm able to kind of help out my, my fellow actors, you know, and relieve some of the, the pressure off of off of our, our stuntmen. Um, 
but you know, six taught me how to kind of live and enjoy, enjoy the process, you know, and that's, that's what I did on this, this movie. I just seriously enjoyed the process. Yeah. I feel like in watching, in watching your performance, it feels like it was a very enjoyable character to inhabit, yeah. to, get, to get to play. And, yeah. and thank you so much for sharing all of this, Edwin. Such a lot. Ah, my pleasure. pleasure. I appreciate it. <laughs>